not too long ago I released a multi-channel collaboration where a bunch of content creators came together to talk about their favourite Skarners memories and it was by far one of my favourite multi-channel collaborations to have done. It was so much fun to bring everyone together to reunite under the same passion of that being of course Skarners but unfortunately amongst that cast of content creators I did miss a few Skytubers so I thought it's the perfect time to introduce a sequel with eight new content creators here to share their favourite Skarners memories and of course I gave my favourite Skarners memory in the previous video so you guys can find out what my personal favourite uh, memory of Skarners is by of course um going back to that video and watching through that thoroughly, which I highly recommend, but of course I will be back at the very end of the video for yet another inspirational speech, but for now we're going to get straight into the content creators who can all be found in the description below, they're absolutely worth checking out, so follow the links and go to subscribe to their channels because every single one of them makes incredible content, but enough has been said and done, let's begin with Judas. Hello everyone, Judith here and I'm here today because Ignite asked me to talk about my favorite memories I had with Skylanders and of course this is going to be a bit more personal today I thought of showing my face to you all yeah fascinating so I'm playing Skylanders for 6 years now and that's quite a long time <laughs> So, I definitely collected very much memories with the game from the French franchise as a whole. And, like, for example, getting into this Galos commu community like last summer was fantastic. Or, also, there was an auction for Starcast on eBay. And I was listening to Akin Armory. And the moment I won the bidding, the melody of Akin Armory dropped. And it was such a small memory to be safe. But now I'm going to my real memory I, I instantly thought about when when Ignite asked me and when I, when I watched part one of, of this and it's the memory I have with Vulcan Village. Well it's my favorite video game level of all time or from my favorite video game Scanless Giants of all time and well, it was like, I I made a break from Skylanders a bit, like, for a few months, and then I opened a new save slot on Giants and to play the story again, because on my first playthrough, I, it was like, I only have, ever had, like, one hour per day to play, and that's why I was skipping every cutscene and dialogue, and I knew nothing about the story, so... This time I, I wanted to play with the story and so there was a chapter 7 Vulcan Village and I, I, I listened to all the dialogue and, and the atmosphere and, and the voices and, and the music and everything, everything was like it hit me, it hit me very hard because I was touched by, I was really touched by this chapter and overwhelmed by how great it is and how much work they, they put into this game and, and I really realized that that they put so much love into this this game and this franchise as a whole and I was so overwhelmed by that and that's why I, I almost cried and that was the moment I I really realized that Skylands is, is something special in my life and and it should be a, a part of my life like forever and at that this this game this this level is like made for eternity and it really touched me and I loved this chapter to death so yeah 
I, I never had such a strong emotions when I'm playing a video game. And that's why that's my favorite Skyrim memory. So yeah, thanks. Hello everyone, I'm Tuimi. This is Sad Dude and Ignite the Fire has asked me to talk about some of my favorite Skylanders memories for his video. And after some crying, here I am. So I'd say all of my biggest and most treasured Skylanders memories are me and my dad playing Skylanders. Uh, my favorite Skylanders, many of you know, is my boy Drobot. And my dad's favorite is Chop Chop. And we would play through Spyro's Adventure. He would always be like, oh yeah, I love his shield and his sword. And I would be like lasering everything around with Drobot. And some of the other memories uh, with my dad would be, he would take me to GameStop Skylanders Day. I remember the biggest one was Trap Team's release. And my dad's like, you know what? I'm gonna buy you like the dark starter pack. And he bought me the whole thing for PS4. And I was just so stoked. And he took me to many other of those Skylanders days at GameStop where we got lots of um, different exclusives and free Skylanders and all sorts of things. My other favorite Skylanders memories was introducing people to Skylanders. I corrupted a lot of people with Skylanders. Um, many of my friends, I like brought them over and I was like, dude, look how awesome this is. And you know, a few weeks later they have their own Skylanders and I'm bringing them over to their house. And, it's a lot harder to corrupt people nowadays, but, you know, I still try with my YouTube channel. But yeah, those are my most treasured memories. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share them, Ignite, and hope you all have a great day. Bye. How's it going, guys? Serbian Skylanders here, and I'm here to talk about my favorite Skylanders memory. Now, in Skylanders, I have had a lot of great and very nostalgic memories, but my favorite is actually a quite recent one. In fact, it happened at the end of 2019. So basically, I want to 100% all games on Nightmare Mode, and for 100%, you need, you know, three stars on each level. But for that second star, you need to finish a level under a certain amount of time. Now this usually isn't a problem for me, however in Giants, the last two levels are actually, and I checked it, they are actually impossible to finish under that certain amount of time on Nightmare Mode. I attempted them at least like 50 times each and then I just gave up. But then last year, you know, I just had an urge to play Giants again and during that playthrough one chumpy bot uh, spawned outside the monster gate and you know I was too stubborn to just reset the level so I tried to kill him with different skylanders and it didn't work and then I had an idea and the idea were these four these are the secret formula to finish the last two levels under that amount of time because when you place them, they deal 999 damage, which is amazing for Nightmare Mode. They can one-shot Arcan Ultrons, and they can help you finish the Chaos Boss quicker. So I immediately, you know, went back to my Nightmare Mode save file, and I tried it out. And I, it only like took me three tries for the 15th chapter, and I did it first try on the 16th chapter. And I finally completed the Giant's Nightmare mode, and then I made a video on my channel. But yeah, that, that is my best memory, and once again, thanks to Ignite for letting me be here. Ignite Fire Skull on the bill here, and you asked me to do this, so okay, here's my favorite Skylander. You can't already tell by the logo. Ha! Alright, Sunburn is the best Skylander I've ever got because he's he's Sunburn, he's a phoenix and who doesn't like Harry Potter? So Sunburn, and there's not that much backstory to Sunburn, I got him at game store and just burned another immediately. It wasn't the first, it wasn't the last, nothing like that. It's just a great Skylander overall and yeah, what's not to love? Some 
yeah. This is Louise. And then the group of all got a great moves there. His dash ability is a good way to just progress faster through the level. His underground and thing that just clears out enemies and it avoids damage easily. But I can't believe he didn't even get an Eon's Elite. So, yeah. And bye guys, please subscribe to Skyland and Bill in the comments. Thanks! My favorite Sconer's memory is perhaps a tragic one, if I do say so myself, but it led on to do good things, I guess. So, back when I started playing Scouters, I started the Surprise Adventure, uh, but it was in December of 2012, so Giants was already released, I didn't know it existed. I went to the store one day, probably February or March of 2013, and saw Scouters Giants, and I didn't know that existed, I just been playing with the six Scouters I got one Christmas, and I was like, okay. It was a three pack. It was Prison Break, Lightning Rod, and Drill Sergeant. I picked it up. My mom said, are you sure this works with your game? I said yes, but I wasn't sure. I didn't know the thing on the side of the box that said what it was compatible with existed. So I brought it home, unboxed it, put them on the portal, and oh, they actually work. So then I just assumed that Scounders Giants worked for Scounders Spiles Adventure. You see the problem. So I went back to the store like a few days later and saw a single pack for Scouters Giants, but it had Flashwing in it. Do you see the problem yet? I picked it up. My mom once again said, so this one also works. I said, yes. I did know the thing on the side of the box existed. Don't judge. I put it, so I brought it home, unboxed it, and uh, hooked up the game. And then I put it on the portal, and uh, I got a message that I still fear to this day. No! The Skylander that you've placed on the portal power that, uh, is not readable. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. I don't remember it from memory, but it, it, it was depressing. So I did what any rational six-year-old boy would do. And I had a meltdown. I had a huge meltdown, which caused my dad to go out to GameStop and get the portal owner's pack of Scounders Giants. So yeah, as I said, it does lead on to do good things, but it is still not a proud moment in my life because yeah. So when Ignite asked me to make this video about what's my favorite Skyliner memory, I instantly knew what it'd be. And it was back in 2011 when I was playing Sky Shooter Docks on the Wii and Skylander Spyro's Adventure, and there was an undead element, and I didn't have any undead Skylanders yet. So my grandma actually brought me to Walmart at like 12 a.m. or something like that, really early in the morning. And I got Chop Chop, and I don't know why, but that memory, that memory is just so fond with me. It was like one of the first, Chop Chop was also one of the first Skylanders I ever bought in stores as well. It was just such a good memory, all the way back from 2011, and that's one of my favorite Skylanders memories. Hi, it's Lee, and today, uh, I think my favorite personal memory of the Skylanders franchise would have to be waking up on Christmas morning in 2011 when I got the very first game on the Wii along with the Legend and Joke of Fire Temple. I just, it's a very nostalgic memory as well, it was nearly a decade ago. And I just woke up Christmas morning, I got a starter pack with this game, Spyro, Trigger Happy and Gil Grunt, and I also got Stump Smash and Zap. So I still remember playing the game, I remember pressing A on the Wii remote to press fire, my favourite character in Skylanders has always been Spyro. Spyro has always been my favourite video game character. He's always been my favourite character in like, you know, Skylanders. He's just a really awesome character. And it took me nine years to complete the collection, but it was all worth it. And yeah, I just, I think my personal favourite would have to be the very beginning. And it's both nostalgic and just really, really fun. It's a fun memory. As I have grown up with these games, I was 7 with Spyro's Adventure, 8 with Giants, 9 with Spot Force, 10 with Trap Team, 11 with Superchargers, and 12 with Imaginators. But 7 year old me just loved the first game. It was very hard at times, but I think everyone found it to be a hard game, but it was a great game and will remain a classic for all time in my opinion. So yeah, that would be my favourite style of the game. Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, my name is Demigod Schmidt here, and today guys, Ignite has asked me to share my favourite Skylanders memory with you guys. Um, 
I would have to say that, like, my favorite Skyliners memories are actually just when I was just introduced to the game series, man. My cousin uh, got Spire's Adventure for Christmas, and I had never played anything like Skylanders before. This Toys to Life game, it was so, it was like the most revolutionary thing that I'd ever played at the time. And it was just like so crazy, I'd never played anything like it, and I just look back on those memories and I'm like, wow. Wow! Look at this! That's like, that's crazy. To just imagine that the Skylanders games could have this much impact on just my life and my channel. And I didn't even have a YouTube channel back then when uh, Spire's Adventure was coming out. It was freaking crazy, dude. So, those are like my favorite memories just to look back on, but... I can't make a video on Skylanders memories without talking about the soul links with Ignite, man. Because honestly, those memories, one, are immortalized on YouTube, but two, even through like all the stress and all the me being an idiot and just hanging out with Ignite and playing those games, it was so much fun and it was the most fun I've had playing Skylanders in so long, dude. So hey, that those are my favorite memories when it comes to the Skylanders games, man. The freaking just the Soul Links with Ignite are, have got to be my favorite memories with Skylanders, at least in a long time. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, that's it for that's it for me. Peace. Oh wow, we're uh, back at my face. Was not expecting that. But regardless, for eagle-eyed viewers amongst all of you, you may have noticed that this is the exact same upload that I premiered six days ago, and that's because, to put it simply, it is. But since you're watching the deluxe edition of this video, there have been a few changes made. However, if you wanted to return to the original video, then you can find it linked in the description below alongside all of the other awesome content creators that featured in this video to help make it as awesome as it is. So huge shout out to every single person who submitted a clip. But regardless, you guys know that I'm wondering why I set that initial premiere to be unlisted and that's simply because there were a few mistakes within the edit that I have visually corrected and I've also uh, not forgotten to add the music into the background this time around because you can hear it as I speak right now. So yes, this is definitely the dictionary definition of a deluxe version of this here video and that's not even where the biggest additions come into play with this here video because there's also three new SkyTubers talking about their favourite memories in this here deluxe edition of Scar's Memories 2 which means this comment I made about Demigod is no longer true. But with that all being said we shall start with Terabog whose clip or at least more specifically whose clip's length Put Scar to Gamer TV to shame. Hello, Terrapol Kid. Today I'm going to tell you my favorite Skylanders memories. On December 25th, 2012, I got the 3DS version of Spyro's Adventure. Unfortunately, I didn't finish the first level due to thinking the vortex at the end was evil for some reason because I was, I was a stupid kid. My sister was actually the person who finished the level because she isn't completely stupid like me. Hi, I'm Gabe. And I'm Make. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're here for Ignite's video, as you can see, because you're watching this on Ignite's video. Make, you can go first. My Skylanders memory is when it, it was building up to Imaginators, and I was, I was really hopeful, because I was like, Dad, can we please pre-order Imaginators, because I want chaos. And he said, no. So, we instead just bought Imaginators the day it came out. And, like, the day after I went to school and I did all my stuff. Then I came back, and there was... I came into my room, and Chaos was just sitting there, menacingly. And my dad was just... Yeah, there were, there were like, a bunch of five-pound ones over, over at Toys R Us. So, we just, we just got one. Nice. And my dad, and my dad has, has told me now that he's, like... I wish I, I wish I bought the rest of those chaoses and sold all of them. <laughs> uh, okay, that's that's a nice memory. Good job. Thank you. Big clap. Uh, I sort of have two, kind of. 
Uh, I don't know why I'm saying kind of, it just is too. Um, they both revolve around uh, this boy right here, Terrapin, which is surprising because I don't really like Terrapin all that much. Um, so the first memory is uh, when I first played Skylanders. Uh, so it was in January of 2012. I was at my friend's birthday party and he got Skylanders. And it was like, you know, the big thing that all of us wanted to play because it was of the games like that he got. Um, and obviously since there were like seven of us, uh, we, ha we all had to take turns. And I remember specifically playing Stormy Stronghold. Uh, I was on that bridge that like you go into the actual castle portion, right where you fight like the tornado dude, and I was playing as Terrafin. And that was the exact moment where I was like, this game is sick. Is that a reason? I don't know why, but it, I thought it was cool at that exact moment. <laughs> so blame Stormy Stronghold and Terrafin for me being in your screen right now. Um, and the other memory is uh, also with Terrafin. Um, I didn't get Terrafin until a bit after Imaginators, so I was with I was with my cousin Julian. If you watch my channel, you see him. Um, uh, I was with my cousin Julian, and he was like, "We should speedrun SSA," and I was like, "Okay." And we took the entire day because we were bad at video games at the time. Um, uh, and it was like coming on evening and we beat the game and I was like, hey, do you want to do the adventure packs? And he was like, I would, but you still don't have pirate seas. And I was like, yeah. And my dad in the background, he was like, oh. And so he ran up into his closet and he grabbed, he grabbed a pirate seas that he had. He had a box pirate seas and he put it down behind me. And I was just talking about like whatever and I didn't notice it. And Julian eventually was like, shut up, look behind you. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and so then my dad had told me that uh, while my grandma had bought me the uh, Empire of Ice and uh, Darklight Crypt for Christmas in like 2012, um, and my my dad has got had gotten me Dragon's Peak the summer of 2013, uh, he had also gotten Pirate Seas, but he just Yay. forgot about it. And so it sat in his closet for years, until that moment. Years! <laughs> years! And that, that was... That was cool. That was a I fun day. I don't know about the chip shape. It, it was still like a good quality box. Like, it was cool. It was cool to unbox Wait, so what, the thing. What style in this game was out at the time? Uh, I think it was like 2017. So... None. No. Wow. <laughs> we were just playing SSA. Wow. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching this and watching Ignite's video. Uh, bye. Wait. Yeah. Bye. Last time I was here with these calming visuals, I was expressing quite vividly the importance of sharing your memories with the world and the impact they can bring. Well, today I want to finish off the video talking about finding these memories hidden deep within. After all, it's hard to share something that you cannot find. I once wanted to share all of my Skylanders cards with my primary school class, the ones that you used to get included with the Skylanders packaging before Superchargers removed them entirely from the packaging from that point forward. Anyways, these cards got stolen, so when it was time for me to share this newfound passion about Skylanders with the class, it became an impossibility to me because I needed those tangible cards in order to feel that memory oozing and share it with the class, my mindset and just what this memory meant to me and yet without those tangible cards there was nothing to remember but that's where 11 year old me was wrong. Memories shouldn't need a vessel in which to be remembered. You don't need to watch a childhood film or cuddle a childhood toy in order to feel your nostalgia and remember those memories you once had. They can be just as tangible when kept close to our hearts and shared about with others as they can be when looking at some physical form that is tied with the memory at hand.
Memories, most importantly, carry strength. A word I've never liked because it implies that some people have it and some people do not. When in truth, we all have unrivaled strength as there is no such thing as a perfect day. Every day, something goes wrong. You can't get through a full day without some negative impact in your life. And yet we power through these moments and we remember them as bad and as harmful they are to remember. We remember, we cling on to the dealing of those situations and that's what the true measure of strength is. Not how many weights you can lift but how you deal with negative aspects of life day in day out and choosing to remember all this negativity is what strengthens our minds so that when the positivity flows into our lives the impact will be that much grander as it sharply contrasts that which we hate and having this balance in our memories is strong since that gives us reason to cling to these memories and so the message I have for you and my 11 year old self is don't let the negativity of life and the physicality of objects eat away at your ability to remain truthful to yourself and keep those memories close to your heart with memories covering the greatest ends of either side of the spectrum for without sadness and hate you can never feel warmth and love so never be afraid of facing the darkness at its core because so long as you remain strong you can conquer it with every memory that has come before now you can fight for what memories are to come hence why memories are our strength our humanity and what can bring us together despite the fight we have for positivity every single day in truth memories give the inner strength needed to combat negative aspects of life through balance as we remember just as vividly the bad memories as we do for good so dig deep and don't let anything including the loss of the idea of a memory needing to be tangible to remembered stand in the way of these deepest most memories